Hi, everybody. I'm talking today about Anne of Green Gables by L.M. or Lucy Maud Montgomery. This is um, Emily from Kid Lit Book Love. Now, Anne of Green Gables is probably my top 10 favorite children's or girls novels of course i'm sure you've heard of it if you haven't read it it is the absolute most beautifully written story because lucy maud montgomery has this just fabulous fabulous <laughs> unmatched talent for describing setting and imagery and description of place so throughout Anne of Green Gables from the very beginning, it's just the most beautifully written book because she describes Avonlea and um, the smells, the scents, the uh, textures, the noises as this just place you would see in your dream, just magical and, and not real, like a surreal place. She even describes color with these long sentences and lines of metaphorical things that relate to the color. I mean, she's a brilliant writer. I absolutely love how this book was written and she's a very clever writer so it's charming and it's witty even the narrator's perspective let me read you a little passage Anne came running in presently her face sparkling with the delight of her orchard rovings but abashed at finding herself in the unexpected presence of a stranger she halted confusedly inside the door she certainly was an odd looking little creature in the short tight wincy dress she had worn from the asylum below with her thin legs ungracefully seemingly long her freckles were more numerous and obtrusive than ever the wind had ruffled her hatless hair into an over brilliant array and disorder it had never looked redder though and bright and cheery than in that moment so she's just one she takes the simplest thing and makes it into a lovely passage and Anne is an orphan girl who um at very beginning she's sitting at a train station she was ordered like a couple um ordered her like out of a catalog they wanted a but they wanted a boy and they were supposed to be sent a boy on the train and they ended up with Anne and so that's a very interesting theme that kind of shows culturally at the time what girls faced is everybody vo boys were more valued than girls and that's very clear throughout some of the earlier parts of this book um she says um, you know, Anne's begging later on for Marilla to keep her. If only I were, I were a boy, I know you'd keep me. And oh, oh, how I dreamt I could be a boy. And, you know, so it's, that's an interesting thematic element you want to look at. But as far as the beautiful and ravishly described settings, let me read you another. Oh, uh, let's see. She had made friends with the spring down in the hollow. There are wonderful, steep, clear, icy, cold springs. It was said about with smooth red sandstones and rimmed in by great palm-like clumps of water ferns and beyond it was a long bridge over the brook the bridge led anne's dancing happy feet up over a wooded hill beyond where perpetual twilight reigned under the straight thick growing firs and spruces and only flowers that were myriads of delicate june bells those shyest and sweetest of woodland blooms and a few pale aerial star flowers like the spirits of last year's blossoms gossamers glimmered like threads of silver among the trees and the fir boughs and tassel seemed to utter friendly speech i mean the whole book is full of descriptions like this and i love it when ann says ask marilla um what are what do you think amethysts are do you think that they're the tears of um lilac flowers or you know just wonderful just such an imagination in this writer it's just the most beautifully written book and there are a lot of um moral lessons in this book uh, so a lot of references to God and religion and Marilla is trying to teach her again to pray and trying to teach her how to um, behave as a girl, trying to um, correct her and all of her little misdoings, how to be proper and proper etiquette. And um, there, the book is just full of thematic elements if you're studying literature to just pick, pick out of like, it's just like a Christmas, you know, you just get to pick and choose um, wit, where every page or something you can analyze or interpret and some of my favorites um, the theme that matches Anne's escapism her need to imagine everything here we have um, if she says if only I knew the spell the magic spell I could open the door and step right into a room where Katie lived and led me out into a wonderful place all flowers and sunshine and fairies and we could have lived there happy but so throughout the book, 
Anne is reflecting on how she um, came from a, a sort of a bad background where she wasn't loved or wanted or impo- she was impoverished and and as being an orphan and what the tragic tale of her parents and she was always imagining and longing and daydreaming about the life she wanted as a as a survival mechanism as a form of escapism from the sort of oppressive lifestyle but even now that she had her family that adopted her marilla and matthew she still just had this wild tenacity for um for imagining everything because she got so used to using her imagination to make her life tolerable so she's teaching adults how to use their imagination in the book. She's criticizing people for not using their imagination. She First thing she judges in a new child, person, neighbor is if they have an imagination. So the theme of imagination as an important element or quality in a human is is a wonderful lesson, I think, in this book because imagination is sort of the heart of all creativity and there's nothing that exists in human, you know, man-made nature, books, movies, furniture, cars, computers, houses, uh, clothing that wasn't first a thought that someone imagined in their mind before they made it real. So I think it's a very strong theme in this book. And, um, you know, there are lots of moral lessons. Marilla says, if you'll be a good girl, you'll always be happy, Anne. And you should now never find it hard to say your prayers. You know, lots of little things like that throughout the book. So well, if, if you have a lot of religious uh, values, this would be a good book for your um, children. And does thing like imagines her perfect bedroom. She imagines what it would be like to have dresses with puff sleeves. She does all these imaginings, but she does it in a happy way, not more sort of a sad, wretched, poor me kind of a way, feeling sorry for herself. She seems very content and happy, but just and just enraptured with the idea of having these other things, but not where she is sulking because she doesn't have them. So it's it's very brilliant, brilliantly uh, done, I think, by um, the author. And um, Anne waves all the morals and consequently aside and seized only on the delightful possibilities that could exist instead. You know, so she did ignore some of the moral lessons and, and would rather live by her imagination. But the orphan theme is very pronounced throughout. She refers to herself as an orphan girl and... Um, the author, Ellen Montgomery, is very good at pulling on the heartstrings of the uh, reader. So she writes things like, Pity was suddenly stirring in her heart for the young child. What a starved, unloved life she had had. A life of drudgery and poverty and neglect. No wonder she had delighted so at the prospect of a real home, thought Marilla. So, um... <laughs> it's... She even talks about, um... She, she, Anne refers to orphans she knew as miserable little creatures and how she was once a miserable creature. And um, it's just, a, she's very mature. Anne is very mature and insightful, which is why I think this book is so intriguing because she has, and these are all my notes. Um, when I read, I take full detailed notes, by the way, especially when I'm studying text for my project. Um, and Anne says, it's all very nice to read about sorrows and imagine yourself living through them heroically, but it's not so nice when you really wake up to having to have them as in sorrows and um she's very conscious of her plight she's very aware she's not she uses her imagination as an enjoyment prospect but she doesn't try to escape into other worlds and think she's really there she's aware and and conscious that she's not living in these imagined worlds she just uses her imagination like a delightful tool like you would use a pen to create a nice love letter to somebody um, it's been my experience that you can nearly always enjoy things if you make up your mind firmly to enjoy them, she says. So I think Anne of Green Gables is just full of lessons that any child should learn, such as how to use your imagination, how you can be anything you want to be if you set your mind to it, how to behave well, um, how to respect adults. Anne is an intriguing character, and I can see why they study Anne of Green Gables in so many uh, schools. And I do not think it would be appreciated very much at all by a younger child too young. You know, there's one, it's one thing to be able to read. It's another thing to, to understand the underlying themes and elements and to appreciate what you read. So Anna Green Gables, I think is a fabulous book for an adult and a wonderful book for teenage girls. And if middle school girls want to read it as well, um, certainly they can read it i think they're just not going to they're going to get a little lost in the really long-winded rant raves that ann goes on so we'll have two full pages of ann rant raving with her tongue rolling without stopping with no paragraph breaks 
and not even a pause. That's Anne's communication style, which makes her so lovely. So I think a child might, with a, with the short attention spans of younger children these days, might it might be a little bit um, uh, choppy for them to get through that. But absolutely recommend it. And I'm actually moving on to Anne of Avonlea, um, the second book, next when I get a chance. Thanks for watching.